A little while ago I made a video about long distance communication between two of these Franken Nanos and uh, it sort of went okay. I was able to get about 30 or 40 metres. I want 80, maybe 100 would be nice. And uh, there was a lot of problems along the way actually. Uh, and I'm still not convinced that for instance I've got the right antenna for this setup. So I'm going to do a lot of experimentation on that. And uh, one of the things which really bugged me though was that this guy was billed as the LGT, I think it's 8F328P, which is the clone of the Atmega 328, supposed to be faster. Turns out that when I was uh, flashing to it, couldn't communicate to it, thought it was my problem, spent way too long trying to debug it. In the end, some strange uh, you know, feeling came over me and I ended up running the old Atmega 328 bootloader at 4 megahertz, if you can believe that. So it's supposed to, I think it's supposed to run at 32, and it's not supposed to be an Atmega uh, 328. But it worked. Now, what I'm worried about, a couple of things I'm worried about, so I want to debug the whole thing. Uh, first thing is, what I'd like to do is to get a clock uh, signal on this, something like uh, maybe 16 megahertz, and try and reflash the bootloader. If this is a 328P, that should be possible. Failing that, this guy comes out. Thank you, Mr. Hot Air Gun. And something goes in like, an, I've got a few Atmega 88s uh, in the same configuration, which, uh, which might work. Uh, so that could be a possibility. I think I've even got some 328Ps, actually, some, uh, some uh, originals that might go in there as well. So either or, we'll get this thing up to speed and see if it makes uh, any indentation on the distance that these guys can talk to each other. In the meantime, uh, a couple of things have arrived. One is the uh, the fake Nano with, you know, purportedly, again, one of these um, chips, which is a, a clone. So I'd like to see if I can talk to it, and that would be, uh, that would be good. And just blinking light, just to make sure I'm not going crazy uh, and I was talking to this in the wrong way. So this is supposed to be the same chip, so we'll see how that goes. And then finally, uh, something else which has just recently arrived from a different supplier is another Franken Nano. So, um, yeah, whether or not it's the same chip in there, I don't know. There's no markings on these things. They're dirt cheap. You know, I'm not really sure if that's going to be another option as well, but I'd just like to see if I can communicate with this guy too. Let's start with uh, this and trying to get a new bootloader on it. Stupid idea number one, which I think will be torpedoed, is to get one of these old 555 modules that I made up uh, a while ago. I'll link that one up there as well. Great little things, actually, for providing a nice, uh, crisp, clean, square wave. But depending on the caps that I put on it, and also on the... Uh, there's a couple of resistors hiding under there. Depending on what those values were, uh, then, you know, you can get... Um, like slow blinking or very fast blinking. This one I think is a slow blinker, but I'm even thinking that there might be a bit of a natural uh, top end on the 555, at least the original one, of about 2 megahertz. but I will check that one. And I do have this uh, also, I think, in a previous um, uh, video as well, which I'll link up. I put together this kit which measures the... Um, the frequency of, uh, of output of various signals. So let's try that. I need to plug that in. Do I have power? Mm, maybe not. I'll get back to you on that. Oh no, here it is, look at this. I do have some power, wow. All right, so let's plug this in. And we're getting zero, fairly appropriate. There's annoying wires in the road. And let's give this guy nine volts and uh, can we even read that? Seven. I'm thinking that that's 0. 0.7 megahertz. So 720 kilohertz. So yeah, nowhere near enough. Uh, maybe if I pull that out. There's a little selector in here too, uh, which is pretty handy. So let's go right back to... Oh, there we go. Yeah, so... Uh, I'm guessing that is around 15 hertz. Let's slow it down. There's a variable pot in here as well. 
Yeah, so what is that, one hertz? Any, <laughs> like fun to play with, right? But uh, this is not going to do it for a signal. I think I'm going to have to find a crystal at uh, 16 megahertz. So uh, let's do that. See you later, 555. Dumb idea, really. Uh, but hello to uh, Crystal 16 and Crystal 20. Uh, so let's start with 16. And uh, I have a bit of trouble getting into these testing ports, actually. So let me just do a little bit of fiddling around with that. Every single time. There we go. It's in. Uh, and we will give it some power. 15.998. Hmm, pretty good. All right, and let's try with the other guy, which has got 20 written on the outside. And again, a little, oh, actually, that's not too bad. And that's 20.002. So now we can burn the bootloader with a higher clock speed, hopefully, uh, on um, our, well, where are we? This guy here. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, and see if we can't uh, maybe, well, firstly, talk to it, secondly, change your clock speed, and then hopefully maybe in the end, um, maybe get a little bit more distance between these guys, if that's part of the problem. I grabbed a Nano, and this specific Nano is missing the USB connector at the, uh, at the end here. Uh, <laughs> I actually can't remember why. Uh, some uh, travesty of electronics that I've inflicted upon it. But you can still talk to it, and a sane person would go probably via this USB ASP and plug this adapter, so this goes from a 10 pin to a 6 pin, and then it goes into the ICSP, the in-circuit serial programmer ports at the top here. But let's say they were missing as well, uh, then what you can do is just go straight out of the adapter and then to the various ports. So um, you've got MOSI and MISO here on um, D11 and D12. You've got your SCK here on D13, uh, power and ground, and then on the other side you've got reset. So there are many ways to get to the chip. And uh, just to show that it's all working, um, I've got a little uh, sketch here which is got um, uh, just blinking away um, and at one hertz but I want to change that just to make sure that it works so just going through all the different options using instead of it's calling it a nano I'm just actually going right back to the at mega 328p so let's upload that and see if it works and yep that's been able to program that uh, via this insane uh, setup but why would I do that? Because you'll notice that on this one here, the Franken Nano that I'm trying to get to, um, well, I can't go through the USB adapter. That's not working. And then to get to the chip, there's no uh, ICSP um, pins at the end of here. So there's no in-circuit serial programming pins. So I thought, well, I'll just put all of these on here and get to the chip. Cannot cannot do it. Tried all sorts of different ways, all sorts of different methods. I think the problem is that uh, this guy here with this bit stuck on the end has probably pulled off a few of these lines from whatever this chip is and therefore um, no, they're not available for the normal uh, serial programming that we see with this, uh, with this adapted nano at the top here. So what to do? Well, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this chip off here. So let's take a look at what that might look at. When the hot air gun is applied and this guy disappears from this Franken Nano, there are a few different options for me to try and figure out what it is to reprogram it, to uh, set the fuses and so forth. So what I could do is I could put it on a board like this. So this is a, an old, old uh, program that I made up maybe three or four years ago now. So the idea is that raw Atmega, I think this is an Atmega 88 chip, goes onto the adapter, puts some header pins on it, just like this guy here. It slots into this cradle. And this programmer has got um, external power, 
and uh, it comes in here via a um, DC DC converter so that would be 5 volts I'm assuming and goes to the board and hence the chip and then you've got your um, ICSP pins broken out here you've got your uh, crystal pins I think that's PB6 and PB7 broken out so you can put an external crystal here these two headers are just appearing here for decoration they don't seem to do anything um, yeah so you, and then you just apply power so a little um, light goes on, put your chip in, uh, connect up your USB uh, ASP to the ICSP headers and away you go. So that's one option. Also though, before uh, that happens, you don't have to solder it up. Once it comes off as a raw chip, it can just go into one of these adapters. So I've used these before as well. Uh, you can tell it because I've put a dot on the corner here. Uh, yeah, so you just match that up, uh, lock that, pop it in again, it goes into this cradle here and you just program your chip accordingly. So yeah, I'm not sure which one I'll use. I'll probably put it on the adapter rather than bother the big guy here, but I'll, I'll, um, I'll have a think about that as we go. First thing to do though is to extract that chip and, uh, and then when it is extracted, I'm actually pretty keen to put this guy on here and just see what difference it makes with uh, what is a legitimate Atmeg 88 chip. There's the brain transplanted guy in there. That's the old God knows what chip. So this is an Atmega 88. So first thing to find out is will it explode when I give it some power? No. Well, that's a good thing. Um, the next thing to do is to try and get some um, blinking action going. There we go. All right, so... Um, just selecting the Atmega. Uh, it's recognized the USB, that is a good sign. And now we'll try and upload. It's the same sketch, so blinking uh, every 100 milliseconds. And, oh, it's program's not responding. Hmm, let me get back to you on this one. Nope, nothing that I can do can get it, this guy to talk via the USB. And uh, yeah, I don't think I'll go down the path of uh, connecting up the USB ASP again because that wasn't working with the old chip. So probably won't work with a new chip. There is a faint possibility, I suppose, that this Atmega 88 chip is, um, you know, kaput to start with. So I'm just gonna rip it off, put it onto here, put some header pins on and uh, make sure it's okay. At Mega 88 blinking and loving it. Wasn't the chip then, so it must be the Franken Nano. I guess the next thing to do is to try the alternative supplier uh, with the Franken Nano and see if that also has a problem. And uh, if that's the case, I might abandon the whole idea of the Franken Nano and just have a separate uh, NRF 24L to. Uh, the microcontroller, which is probably what I should have done in the first place. Intriguing idea, but uh, yeah, maybe too much trouble. For completeness, here's one of the uh, LGT8F382. So this is the nano clones. So without the RF stuff on the end, um, <laughs> I was going to say a legitimate clone but that's ridiculous but anyway um, let's just see if we can talk to it to get it to blink uploading and blinking yep so um, definitely more of a problem I think with the um, the Franken Nano than the actual chip itself um, yeah so the next thing to do is to just have a quick look at the other um, RF Nano from a different supplier Again, the uh, semi-official LGT8F382 
uh, sorry, 328 libraries aren't any good. So I've just actually configured this as a standard at mega 328. Um, external 16 megahertz crystal. Um, yeah, all the standard stuff. So let's just see if we can upload that. Looks good. Yep, and uh, is blinking. Wow. <laughs> okay, wow. So maybe a library issue with the um, the semi-official um, LGT8F328 libraries. Whatever the reason, I'm pretty sure I'm going to abandon uh, this particular Frank and Nano uh, and variations on a theme. I don't mind the old uh, fake... So supposedly the same chip, so the uh, the fake nano seems to work fine, happy with that, can communicate. But um, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with these guys. Not quite uh, kosher, I don't think. And um, yeah, a little bit too much trouble for what they're worth. Anyway, that is the circuit sort of working this week. Uh, catch you next time.